Now the effects at the mic, it's very good. Uh, sorry, today we are going to continue our uh, discussion, uh, but I, uh, I want to make first announcement that the, in, in the, for the assignment, we extended for one week and we are going to arrange for a special session for a workshop about the assignment. Uh, in this workshop, we are going to discuss our findings. in time or in uh, schedule, not following this class uh, schedule. Uh, yesterday, we stopped at, at the TX or travel time distance care. We call it TX or travel time distance care because it's a plot between the arrival time or the travel time of the uh, first onset seismic waves. We are going to, to have an idea and discuss the types of these first onsets and the position of the geophones they are recorded, on, uh, recorded uh, in. So we have distance representing the position of the geophones, positions of the geophone, and we have time representing the onset. So how we obtain travel time distance graph? Uh, by the way, the, the lecture is on the uh, e-learning facility. Okay, so TX graph is made by picking the first onset of the first arrival seismic phases. The big phase should be defined with great care. We have to take care when we are picking phases. For refraction, which is an active source method, the first onset should be generally uh, be compress compressional because we are using sources like, like dynamite, like uh, hammer or wet drop, we are uh, uh, producing compressional field. We must take care because under certain circumstances the onset is masked due to noise and we may pick later arrivals that may be of negative polarity. Most of us uh, uh, fall in this uh, problem. Uh, picking later arrivals, uh, thinking that this is the arrival, the onset, and this caused error in time. The error in time result in error in both velocity determination and in depth determination, as we are going to see in this lecture. Now, we have this graph which show the basic parameters of the, travel, of the travel time distance curve, or TX graph. Now, at the shorter, shortest distance from the shot, here is a shot at, at the origin, the first onset should always be the direct waves. Why? Because direct waves move the shortest path directly from the source to the G-phone. But their propagation is restricted to the velocity of the shallow or soil, which is usually less than the velocity of the bedrock. So, after certain time, we have two types of energy arriving at the same time. 
these are the direct wave and the head waves belonging to the refracted energy at the first horizontal interface. Why refraction energy come first after, after crossover distance? Because refraction or refracting energy in the form of head waves move part of its course with higher velocity, the velocity of the deeper layer. So, as distance increase, the effect of higher velocity increase, and, and thus the, uh, the time taken by the refracted energy becomes uh, less. Sorry. Due to the refracted energy uh, follow or propagate during its course to arrive to the surface, at certain time, the time taken or the travel time becomes lower or smaller, and then the refracted energy becomes the first energy to come. Okay? At later arrival, and this also is important for our assignment. We want to, to understand the, the various seismic energy present in our seismic section. We, we have the direct, we have the ref refracted, and then we have the reflected energy. The reflected energy, as you see from the TX graph, usually comes later. So it's somehow, as you are seeing now or observing now in your assignment, obscured or masked with later arrivals and with arrivals from other uh, seismic energy like ground roll uh, and sur surface waves and direct energy and so on. Okay, we have now two main points that help us to determine the depths. If we extrapolate the seismic refraction energy to x equals zero, we will have what's called the intercept time. The intercept time is the time at x equal zero. It will represent the time taken by the, the ray to move, to meet the uh, refractor, and then to move down, and then to refract back to the surface. The other point is the crossover distance, because at the crossover distance, we have two equations, the equation of the direct waves and the equation of the refracted waves, we can solve simultaneously to obtain the, the depths. In case of flat horizontal layer case, in order to deduce or determine the velocity, the velocity here for direct waves always the inverse of slope of the segment representing the direct wave. Okay? Do you know what, what slope is? Okay? So what slope is? What is slope? So you know the slope. We have line and we want to determine its slope. How to determine the slope of this line? One. Okay, Adib. What if you don't have the equation of this line? You, you, you see, somebody in, in, in Arabic uh, proverbs, 
they are seeking, but one guy uh, uh, called Goha, I don't know you, know you heard about, where is your ear, Goha? Instead of pointing here, he said, it's here. Okay, uh, the slope, the slope, we, we define any two, two points along the line, and then we determine difference in T and divide it by difference in X. So, in your equation, that's why I'm telling you where is your uh, ear, in your equation, it's like here. It's y minus 1, 1 uh, divided by x minus x1 equal slope. And the slope itself equal y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. In our case, the slope is x or delta x divided by, uh, sorry, delta t divided by delta x, which is the reciprocal of velocity. Okay? So here, to in case, and again, emphasizing, in case of fla flat layer case, we can determine velocities from the slopes of the segments. The slope of, of the direct wave represents the velocity of the wizard layer or the superficial soil. The slope of the head wave represents the velocity of the bedrock here. So, as we are going to see, we, we will use this information to solve the, the problem. Now, if the, the, the case, in our case, which is the ideal one, I only have flat surface, horizontal, so all, all I need is to, is to determine the depths and velocities. I have no change in depth in, in our ideal case. In horizontal uh, interfaces, we have many uh, privilege. It's, it provides simple introduction to the construction of travel time distance curve. Uh, at the TX graph, close to the source, the first arrival is due to the direct ray traveling in layer one, the, the weathering layer or the superficial layer. This plots as a straight line on the TX diagram, the red one in the previous uh, figure. The slope of the line is the reciprocal of the layer one velocity, assuming distances is, an, is on the X axis. The intercept time for direct waves should be zero. The extrapolation of our uh, picking should meet or should go directly to the origin of our graph. So this is one of the, um, of the controlling facts that we can understand that our pick is good is good enough. If I have inter intercept other than zero, so my, my picking is not, is probably not, not good. This is the case for direct waves. We have the source, and we have the blue line representing the propagation of direct waves, and here the green square, squares represent the, the g folds. This time is called travel time, represents the time taken by the direct wave to move from the source to the receiver. 
So as we move shorter distance, we have smaller time. Longer distance, we have longer time and so on. As you see, we have the velocity, straight line in our case. Why? Because we are assuming we have no change in velocity. We have homogeneous layer with single velocity, which, which generally is not the case. Uh, it's not always the case, because sometimes we have fills and so, which change the, the velocity. When the critical distance exceeded, refraction occurs, which means at, the, at x equals zero and at shorter distance, we do not observe, we do not usually observe uh, refraction energy. Why? Because it takes more time to arrive at G4 and uh, because of the critical angle condition. So, after certain distance, before the crossover distance, called the critical distance, the, uh, the refracted energy is not present at the critical distance. It commences to, to be visible on our uh, record. A refracted ray then travels at velocity V2 sending return rays back to the surface as it does so. At some point, the crossover distance point, the refracted ray begins, being the faster, will overtake the direct ray and the return rays will become the first arrivals despite their longer travel distance. Why? Because the difference in velocity. We have different in velocity, so, if, if I have two cars, one old one and one new make, and then uh, I, I choose a course, smaller course for the, for the old one and the longer one for the new one, uh, uh, if it's the, the distance relatively is big enough, always the new one will come first. Okay? But at shorter, very short distances, of course, the, the old one will come first because it, it, it cuts smaller distance. This is the, the situation in seismic refraction. As the distance increase, the change in time becomes uh, uh, smaller, 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 then, then the refraction energy comes first. It is this that are now plotted on the TX diagram. And this form. So the dashed bar is that we have no refraction energy here. This, area, this distance is called the critical distance for refraction. And then refraction starts. They intersect at the crossover distance. After the crossover distance, the refraction energy becomes the first constant. The TX diagram thus develops an hour branch due to the refracted ray. This is again a straight line whose slope is the reciprocal of V2. There is now an intercept time whose value is determined by the layer thickness one, uh, uh, the layer one thickness and the two velocities. The in intercept time is an example of the so-called delay time sum. We are going to investigate this uh, the method delay time for a regular interface, maybe uh, tomorrow, inshallah. Composed of the separate times taken by the signal to descend to the interface and then to return to the surface. Maybe today we will we'll go, to, we'll go through delay time. If the time 
uh, in our uh, site. Now, this is a summary of the situation. We have a shorter distance, we have direct wave with a slope uh, equal inverse of the velocity of the surface layer, the soil, and we have the crossover distance with the, the refraction and direct waves that came at the same point. The, the critical distance is the distance at which the refraction energy starts to be present in our uh, records. Uh, after the crossover distance, refracted energy becomes the, the first onset, and the velocity in case of horizontal layer case is the slope, is the inverse of the slope. Now, to the, can say, ugly part in, in our uh, lecture because most of you do not like much mathematics, although mathematics is the mother of, uh, of science, and maybe we cannot understand many phenomena without mathematics. Luckily, uh, most of the mathematics here is algebra, so it's, it's not... Uh, so, so difficult, but uh, believe me, if you uh, exert enough, enough uh, effort and spend enough time and under understand the basic principle, you will never forget these equations. Even you, you will understand starting from these, I, I can follow s some certain routes then I arrive at the final relation without memorizing, just following the uh, mathematical derivation. Now, we, we define by T1 the travel time for direct waves, and then by T2 we define the travel time of refracted wave. In case of direct waves, the travel time, T1, is, this, is uh, defined by x, the distance, divided by V1. Very simple. Simple or not? Simple. No problem. Okay? The problem comes later. <laughs> now, we want to, to determine the travel time for refracted energy. In order to determine the time, we should have the length of the bus and the velocity. Okay? So, the length of the bus is from A to C, from C to D, and then from D to F. Okay? Due to the horizontal interface, both AC and uh, DF are equal. Okay? You can just use triangles and fit triangles, you will get this. Why? Because the, the thickness here should be the same here, the, the same angle here and, and here. So uh, this, this angle is, is uh, uh, vert, uh, 90 degree and this is 90 degree. So, so the, these two triangles are uh, fitting, are fitted, and then AC equal DF. Okay? So far, so good? Okay. So, our intention is to find the, these lenses in terms of something 
that we need, which means we are going to determine these lenses in terms of the critical angle of refraction, IC, and H, which is the thickness or the depth to, to the interface. So for AC, I have the triangle A, B, C. So what is the trig trigonometric function that, that relates AC and AB? Trigonum, cosine, sine, tan, trigonometry. So what is the trigonometric function that relate AC and AP? Cosine. Okay. So we can say we can see that uh, cosine IC equal H divided by AC, or AC equal H divided by cosine IC. Okay? Simple. No problem, I guess. And as we and as we agree, AC and DF are equal, so AC uh, so DF also equal H divided by cosine IC. So this lens is determined and this one also is determined. The problem is to determine C, D. Okay? In order to determine C, D with something we know, we lend our knowledge of the distance A, F, which is X. Okay? The distance between the source and the G phone, the X distance. So, but the X distance at the interface from B to, D, to E, and I want to have from C to D only. So, I have to subtract BC and DE from X. Also, from the fitting of the triangles, we find that BC equals DF. Uh, sorry, DE. So you are waking. You are uh, you are not sleeping yet. <laughs> That's a good. Okay. So we want to determine either BC or D, E. So, what is the relation between B, C and I, C, the angle I, C, and H, the trigonometric function? No, not sine, not sine. Tan, tangent. Okay, this is tangent. Sine will be B, C divided by A, C. But the relation between H and uh, BC and IC is the tangent. So, tan IC equal BC divided by H. So, BC equal DE equal H tan IC. Thus, the, the lens I have equal 2H divided by cosine IC plus X minus 2H tan IC. Again, the, the lens of the ray from the source to the, receive, to the receiver equal 2H tan IC, sorry, 2H divided by cosine, cosine IC plus X minus 2H tan IC. 
So far so good? Yes. Okay. Okay. To determine the time, and this is very important, we have to divide each lens with a corresponding velocity. The ray moved from AC in the first layer, so it will be divided by the velocity of the first layer. So I have 2H divided by V1 cosine IC. Okay? While from C to D, we have X minus 2H tan IC divided by V2. Which means that I can rearrange the relation that T2 equal 2H divided by V1 cosine IC. I'm just getting this here. Minus 2H tan IC divided by V2 plus X divided by V2. So taking 2H as common, we have 1 divided by V1 cosine IC minus sine IC divided by V2 cosine IC plus X divided by V2. So somebody can tell me how to get rid of uh, IC, this, uh, this annoying angle from this relation. Any uh, suggestion from you? Okay. We have some keys that sine IC equal V1 divided by V2. Okay? And also we have cosine IC equal anybody have suggestion here? Cosine IC equals so we need even the, the trigonometric relation we have uh, uh, back in the, in the high school, in the secondary school, even the preparatory schools. So everything now you, you, you will determine that everything you studied is very important. You, this cosine IC equal square root one minus sine square IC. Okay? Which means I have cosine IC equal 1 minus V1 divided by V2 squared. Okay? And also tan IC, I, I use this, equal sine IC divided by cosine IC, which means that tan IC equal V1 divided by V2, all divided by square root, 1 minus V1 divided by V2 square. Okay, so we can use this tri trigonometric identities to, to make our relation in terms of velocities rather than in terms of the angle I see. But this is not, is not uh, an easy task. Also, it, it requires a lot of work. Because I'm going to, to remove uh, sine IC, uh, cosine IC, and so on from the relation. To determine the depths, we are returning, we are returning back to, to the relations. To determine the depths, we either use the crossover distance. At crossover distance, 
we have the depth equal x uh, c crossover distance divided by 2 square root v2 minus v1 divided by v2 plus v1. Here we at crossover distance we make use of the relation t1 equal t2 which means I have x divided which here is xc divided by v1 equal t2 which is uh, 2, uh, 2h multiplied by one divided by v1 cosine ic minus sine ic divided by cosine ic plus xc divided by v2 here we have also v2 so equating this and removing ic will end up with a relation and i will uh, i hope you will try to to obtain this relation that the depth equal the crossover distance divided by 2 times square root v2 minus v1 divided by v2 plus v1. This is the depth we are looking for. As we, as we said, as we have flat layer case, we, we only interested in defining the depths either at crossover distance or at the intercept uh, time, and then we have the all, all depths. When we have irregularities, we are going to plus minus method and generalized ray method. At intercept time, at intercept time, we have the relation 2h, 1 over v1 cosine ic minus sine ic divided by v2 cosine ic only. Why? Because here at the intercept time, x equals 0. So the x term is removed. And then I end up with this relation, the intercept time equal 2h or 2z multiplied by square root v2 square minus v1 square divided by v2 minus v1. So can any, anyone now fast invert this relation and give me the relation of the uh, z? Very simple task. Just train you invert this one. This relation in terms of intercept time. We need z to become here and t to become here. So yes, Azim. Can you try? Uh, again, please. Z is equal to V2 times V1 times T over 2 times square root of V2 squared minus V1 squared. Okay. Okay. Correct. Now we will stop here like uh, like uh, 1000 nights you know 1000 nights uh, of Sherazad and Sherayar 
and now we'll stop and tomorrow we'll continue you you you, you the, well, in, in english it's uh, arabic nights this is the yes shirazan and Shir. so today is uh, all what we have tomorrow we'll continue our story about seismic uh, reflection okay uh, thank you